Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on this 1979 Fiat 124. Now, this has been sitting in a garage since 1984, and the owner wants it to go to a new home. I said, no problem. As soon as I walked up to it, it absolutely reeks of animal urine. You're probably gonna find some friends in here. Uh, uh, you think? Yeah. I can smell it from here. This is why I'm wearing the mask. So we're gonna try to get this thing cleaned up, off to a new home today, and hopefully on the road once again. Today, on this episode of Drive and Protect. The Fiat 124 Spider is a convertible sports car built from 1966 all the way through 1985 and of course designed by the famous Pininfarina factory. After a bit more investigation, I believe this to be a 1979, not a 1978, because Fiat began calling the 124s the Spider 2000, as you can see on the rear emblem right here. This is a monocoque, four-cylinder front engine, dual overhead cam with roughly about 86 horsepower and only weighing 2,200 pounds, so it's bound to be a fun weekend driver. Sticker price in the late 1970s was around $6,000, and today this needs to find a new home or it's going to get sent to the junkyard as the owner is moving south and selling the house. When I first arrived last summer to check out the car, luckily it was still in the garage, so it was covered, but it definitely was a home for rodents based on the smell alone. We are Italian, so we don't care. Either way, it needs to be sent to the studio for a full decontamination before a mechanic or another brave soul dare work on it. Day one's pretty simple. Put on my bunny suit. Feeling good. And remove the spider webs, the bird poo, the caked on dirt, and the pounds of mice poop everywhere. Before I could even get within a few feet of this car, I first had to put a chlorine dioxide tablet inside just to have a chance of not gagging while I was in the interior. As you can see here, it was bubbling more than usual because I can only assume it was just so bad inside. While the tablet was marinating, I power washed the nearly 40 years of accumulated dirt and feces off the outside of the car. Now the engine was next level gross. Check out the puddles of urine sitting on the top of the manifold and the acorns in front of the frame. Absolutely disgusting. With foam and boost in the foamer, I coated everything and let it soak for a few minutes. Next, I lifted the car, removed the wheels, and then power washed the undercarriage to chase out any rodents that weren't evicted during last week's transportation to the studio. With an agitation brush, I scrubbed the soaked up undercarriage to help loosen the grime and remove the mouse trails that they used to sort of retrace their steps back into the car as they move in and out of their shelter. After a healthy rinse, I focused on washing the exterior with a microfiber wash towel and in the tight spots, a dual density brush. As you can see, everything I touched with clean white soap turned yellowish brownish. It was absolutely disgusting during the agitation. I don't really use this lightly because I do this every single day, but this entire car is basically a rolling toilet. The amount of junk hitting my floor was the second worst I've ever seen in my studio. If you're asking yourself what's the first, it was an Audi RS6 wagon that was so packed with mud. Now this wasn't disgusting, it was just mud, that I had to clean it up by scooping it up and actually using my industrial size shampoo machine hose just to kind of gobble all this up and throw it out. So absolutely just a nightmare on my floor. And we later on after the video, like days later, we have to scrub it and sanitize it, it's disgusting. 
Anyhow, just to kill the smell in the building every time I power wash the car and I hit the floor, I had to re-clean the floors, I don't know, two, three times during the wash process alone. And of course, that brown, yellowy stuff you see, that's exactly what you think it is. Next, I used compressed air, not so much to dry the paint, but to blow out all those pockets of standing water in, in the nooks and crannies of the engine, et cetera. Especially helpful on disaster vehicles. It's really key to have that compressed air. Again, if you don't have a huge compressor, Metrovac makes a mini version of their master blaster called the Sidekick, super cool. This can be a good alternative for blowing out the tight spots. With the outside now washed, I tackled the inside by first putting the convertible top down. Now we do this for two reasons. One, it's easier to work on the leather, et cetera. But two, more importantly, you're not trapped inside with that horrible smell. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about that later on when I was working on the rebuild rescue plane. I got incredibly sick and I'll describe that later. It was mostly because I, there was nowhere for any of the steam and the gas and all the cleaning to go anywhere because I was in this cockpit. Anyhow, when I was doing that process here, I found a seatbelt all chewed up. So this is gonna be an interesting find. Anymore. As you can imagine, the inside was moldy. It was white little spots everywhere, covered in mice poop, dusty, and just grimy from years, or actually, I should say decades of just sitting in the garage. The first thing I did was just remove everything on the inside, including the seats, just to try to find where the nest might be. Naturally, I need a special L-shaped screwdriver, so I called Steve to the rescue. A screwdriver is for slotted screws. No, it's a screwdriver. I mean, it's a screw. It's a screw. It's a screw. It's an old car. It's a screw that's in there. But so, I mean, I guess I can do it with a ratchet, but I would need an actual... Let me see what you got. Oh, come on. <laughs> he has this mini ratchet with a Phillips head screwdriver on it that fit perfectly in the low profile between the seat bottom and the screw top holding the seat rails in place. Naturally, I got those out and it popped right out. No nest underneath, but we did need to remove them. After a quick vacuum to help diminish the smell so my neighbors don't call the police on me, I only had one seat left to find this mouse house. Of course, that was the back seat, seat back area. To do that, I had to put the roof back up so that I could have room to actually pull it out, unhook the latches holding it in place, and when I did that, touchdown, I found oh. it. Uh, I knew we'd find it. Yeah, the level of mouse poo and pee in this particular area was just next level. I think my vacuum now hates me. Based on the condition of the engine, it was fairly obvious that we were gonna find a nest and we did. Now what makes this uh, very dangerous. And the reason why I'm wearing a bunny suit and all this protective gear is when we disturb it, when I pull it out of the back seat, you can see this kind of plume of disgusting like stuff that hits the air. And if you remember, did it, I did an airplane with the Rebuild Rescue folks. And when I was done with that, a few days afterwards, I got incredibly ill with the hantavirus, which is basically fecal matter from mice and rodents and rats and that sort of thing and then as you disturb it it goes up in the air and because i was in a cockpit i was in an airplane it didn't have anywhere to go like right now i'm outside i want to keep this outside so the air is a little bit more fresh got into my lungs and made me very ill so if you find this type of thing in your car your house your your boat anything please wear as much protective gear i was absolutely knocked out for one month so with that being said i'm gonna vacuum this up and keep working on the car See all this stuff Okay, after finding the nest, the next step is to cover everything on the interior with digest enzyme cleaner for organic stains. That's fecal matter, vomit, urine, milk spills, et cetera, et cetera. If you have kids or a pet, this is your emergency cleaner that you need to have with you at all times in case of an emergency. So I coated everything to give myself a fighting chance at removing the odor from the growth of bacteria on the inside of the car. To remove the dirt and the grime on the seats, I'm using ammo lather in an aerator mixed with some water so I can get more even coverage on everything that needs to be coated. Once everything is thoroughly coated, I increase the effectiveness of that product by introducing heat, or in this case steam, and a scrub brush nozzle. The trick here is, before it dries, to immediately scoop it up with a microfiber towel and then use compressed air or a master blaster, etc., to blow out the trapped water and gunk in the seams and just scoop it up again. I repeated the same steps on the rest of the interior.
At some point in your process, the brush may become so filled with fecal matter, as this one did, that I had to wash it out just to get back to cleaning instead of sort of spreading the bacteria around the surface. So make sure you keep an eye on that. When I took it out of the sink, I had to reapply digest to the bristles and the handle just to kind of degrossify myself. And then I went back at it. For the carpets, I'm using an air diffuser with shag fabric cleaner in the reservoir to penetrate the stains. Now this works really great, but if you're not wearing a mask now, I'm telling you, you're gonna get sick, trust me. With the fibers now soaking in shag, I then steam vac the carpets to remove the cleaner and draw out all that junk. If you wanna gag, watch when I remove the reservoir water, you've been warned. Oh my god, that's blood. That you can't even come close to seeing through that. Oh. All right. Uh -oh. Same thing in the trunk. Now this is clearly a mouse highway around the nest, meaning to get from one side of the car to the other, they did that through the trunk. It's the poop trail. So I soak the metal in lather and the aerator mixture to sort of loosen up the dried up mess before scrubbing it with my agitation brush. You can see where the urine pulled up in the corners and is where oxidation occurred because of that acidity within the urine, much like the El Dorado with the 207 original miles on it, but it had a cat infestation that nearly destroyed the engine compartment because of the urine. By now, if you're not totally disgusted, make sure you watch to see what happens the next morning when I come into work, then hit the like button. And don't worry, we have a cyclone coming in for a detail soon to sort of cleanse the palate. Okay, so it's the next morning. I let the Fiat sit and kind of just air out and drip dry. And when I walked in, this is what I saw. Check this out. Now, as you can see, this is just a ton of urine that seeped out overnight from the seat back that had the nest in it. So over the past, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 years with the mice in there, they were peeing and pooing, et cetera. And it just gets stuck in the cushion. That's why the cushion is so critical when you're cleaning seats. Now this one in particular, it's a little bit of a unique situation on these older cars. So sometimes on cars that are very expensive, this one is not, uh, you have to match this color so that the rest of the seats, which that seat, that seat, and this one are totally fine. The, the mice weren't sitting there making a nest and peeing and pooing for years and years and years. This one's totally shot with respect to the cushion. So in very rare cases, what they'll do is they'll take this off, they'll take all the pins off of this, re-clean it, re, uh, you know, launder it, et cetera, just because the color matching might be off. So if the, like if it's a really rare Ferrari or whatever, that particular material is gonna be just a shade different than the rest of it and it'll devalue the car. I'm not saying it on this one. This one's not that example, but that's why sometimes people do that. In my opinion, this should be tossed out. You could potentially keep that so it matches, but that's just a, a huge example of, even if I power wash it until my eyeballs fall out, it still has urine in there. It's just not safe. So obviously I'm trying, my goal here obviously is just to make this as safe as possible so that someone can come in and fall in love with this car again, potentially take it apart, take the engine out, et cetera, et cetera. My goal is just to make it safe. And this is just a prime example of how dangerous it can be. Next, I reinstalled the interior except the back seats as the cushions absolutely need to be replaced because they carry the most significant strength of the smell. So I bagged it up for the new owner just to use it as a color match in the future. With the interior now clean enough to have a mechanic work on it in the future, I started polishing the paint while Jordan worked on the wheels. The paint itself is very scratched, swirled, and has some crazing underneath, but for whatever reason, it played super nice for me.
Check out the before and after on the trunk. Huge difference, and it's especially hard to see on silver finishes, so this looks spectacular in person. For those of you interested in the polishing details, I am using my new straight cut sheer cutting wool pad and polishing fluid. Then I followed up with my straight edge foam waffle pad and the same polishing fluid. If you look at the clarity of the ceiling skylight from one side to the other, the distinctness of image was totally worth the time I spent on it. After cleaning up the paint, I focused on the chrome finish that had light oxidation. For this, I'm using plum wheel cleaner that has a pH of 11, so it's a strong alkaline cleaner. In general, it's normal to use an acidic cleaner for rust and minerals to neutralize their alkaline characteristics, but you need to be careful with stronger acids, especially if you're not familiar with them. Super strong acids can of course burn your skin and hurt your lungs and so on, but yes, they are very effective, so you need to choose wisely. Nonetheless, a stronger alkaline product like Plum, which is on the other side of the pH scale, it is also highly effective, but with a less potential for bodily harm versus using phosphoric acid. So keep all that in mind. I'm using 4 ot steel wool to help shave the oxidation off as well, and the results are night and day. Next, I applied Reflex Pro Finishing Wax to the paint and to sort of help the smell in the room because this formula is the best smelling thing I have in my cabinet. I don't know if you saw the Instagram comments on your picture, but there was a guy commented mm. like, I have been pissed. Yeah. This panel right here is messed up because this was the only window. It's all cracked there. Inside, both Jordan and I rejuvenated the seats because we hit them pretty hard with cleaner. Obviously, it was very necessary, but we do need to re-moisturize them after the huge scrub down. For the convertible top, I re-cleaned with shag in the air diffuser and then scrubbed with a dual density scrubber before scooping everything up with a microfiber towel. These older tops tend to really hold on to dirt well, so you may need a few attempts to clean them gently. On the rear plastic, we both scrubbed with polishing fluid by hand to lighten up the years of fading and grime. Now, it wasn't perfect, but it was much better when we were done. As you can see here, the glass on the car was atrocious, but because no one actually touched it in almost 40 years, it was a really nice and swirl-free glass, meaning that the structure of it was really good. So once you removed all the disgusting grime, it actually was perfectly clear. For the trim, Jordan used mud instead of Frame Pro because this was smooth black rubber and not black textured plastic found on most modern cars today. Mud is just a better fit for this type of material. With the wheels on and the tires dressed, I wanted to install the cover over the convertible that I found in the trunk. Now, it was in a plastic bag, so it was perfectly clean. So at this point, she's starting to look like a weekend warrior with a little bit of swagger again. She just might need some new shoes and, you know, maybe a running engine, Not just minor stuff. But she did look the part for sure. The before and after was huge. All 
that was left was to find her a new home. Now, as it turns out, after my Instagram post a few days ago about the Fiat, the same guy that was in the garage the day that I was there to meet the owner about the Fiat, he contacted me immediately after the post and asked if I was looking for a new home for this, that sort of thing. I said, yeah, so he's on his way up now. So here's the backstory. He was a friend visiting the owner's son at that random time I just happened to be there looking at the car for this video. Turns out he's Italian, he loves Fiat. So this thing's going to a great home. He's gonna get it up and running, but he hasn't seen the car since last summer until today. Hey. Hey, Larry. Good to see you. Good to see you. There she is, check her out. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. What do you think, man? Is Brand the, new. Is it the same car? I know, right? Wow. You have to see my floor when I was done with this. The I floor bet. was black. But oh my God. The fact that we're even standing here. Yes. Is amazing because just standing here without a mask on, it was it was atrocious. So no mask on, you still, you can't really smell it, right? Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, no, it's. So check this out. There you go. Nice Italian way. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Hi. You please, it's yours. Oh, comfy. Yeah, nice, right? Yes. Lower it a little bit and drive it. And you're not gonna repaint it, right? No. I wouldn't repaint no. it. I, I like it like this. I like this. the patina. Yeah, it looks it's, good. There's little nicks and things here. It's fine. It's gonna make the interior do some work on the back there. Yes. Maybe put like a you know, leave the seats out like you were talking about. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yes. But other than that, I think it's just engine work and these are relatively easy to work yeah, on. Yeah, they're no? pretty simple. Yeah. I mean, so. I never work on this kind of car, but I work on German cars. So this, I hope is a piece of cake compared to. Oh, I can't wait to see you on the road. Congrats, Miss man. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sure, the knee doctor would love this. There you go. There it goes. You know how many times I've done this? <laughs> like probably a thousand times on, on this particular trailer with that stupid little yes. clip. I'm wondering if this thing's gonna leave a, a trail of urine as at least. <laughs> Say did it leak? See you later, enjoy! <laughs> That's awesome. From 40 years sitting there. No wash, nothing, cleaned it up, and now it's back on the road. All right, success. <laughs> Well guys, if you like this episode, you gotta check this one out. This is a Mercury Montclair that was gonna be destroyed, put into the junkyard, crushed. If we didn't save it, we picked it up, we brought it back to the studio, cleaned it up, and found a new home for it. The new owner lost his mind, actually started weeping when he got the car for free. Such a heartwarming episode, you gotta check it out. As always guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. No way, no way.